It's supposed to be nasty tonight. It's supposed to get down below freezing. It's supposed to snow for multiple hours. So we're gonna survive overnight without a sleeping bag. So should I just lay down right here in the snow or get underneath something that mother nature has already done for us? That's rule number one with natural shelter making. Let mother nature do the work. Then from there, we need to find other materials to help us out and keep us warm without a sleeping bag. It's probably gonna be a little cold, but let's do it. <laughs> We have the most protection above us right here. So let's make our shelter under these branches. I don't see any big hazards, any giant dead branches. There aren't any trees leaning over this spot. So that's also a primary concern, safety. Make sure a tree doesn't fall on you at night. Let's stay under this spot right here where there's the most overhead protection. Get out all the sticks and all these sharp, pokey pine cones from underneath here. They're extremely uncomfortable to lay on. You'll find out right away if you're laying on one. And then we're gonna move all of these dead pine needles that have fallen down and dried out underneath over our bed. We want our bed to be four fingers thick, compressed at a minimum. So this is over four fingers right here. But as I push down on it, it's under four fingers compressed. We want to trap the air to make insulation underneath us. That's the whole point behind an insulation bed. Make our bed first and then build a structure overhead above us. So it's supposed to snow tonight. We need to make sure we make a good shelter. I'm not going to do some gimmick janky shelter. We're going to do something practical. This isn't for the views. This is to help you out if you have to survive in a real world situation. Look at all this grass out here. Don't get the stuff on the ground because it's still wet. But since it's standing, the wind dried it out. So you grab a handful, break it off. Grab a handful, break it off at the base. Put it in a pile. Make a big pile in the area where you're collecting grass and then bring it back to your shelter. Don't just walk back like this. You're gonna waste all your energy. The advantage to grass is that it's hollow. It traps a lot of dead air space. It's great, but the downfall, it's hard to collect a whole bunch. Sometimes, depending on the area you're in. You have to evaluate the materials that you're working with whether you're in the tropics, the desert, or the Arctic. It all depends on the materials that you have. This is not hurting the environment whatsoever. All the grass is dead and dormant right now. The roots are still alive. They'll spring up new grass in the spring. Oh, did I mention that it's almost dark? That's great. So you can see the sun right up there in the horizon. We have about an hour, hour and a half left of daylight. So we need to get moving. <laughs> Let's improve our bed just a bit. So for a debris nest, you need a lot of insulation. From my fingertip up to my armpit, I wanna get that much insulation in between myself all around me. So whether that be tree boughs, grass, but if you're on the East Coast or in a deciduous forest area where there's a whole bunch of leaves, it's the same thing. You just pile a whole bunch of leaves around you. Maybe you've seen a lot of different shelters with framework around it and they pile a whole bunch of leaves on top of it. That is really nice when you have those leaves, something small. 
because when you start moving around they all fall down and then you lose insulation all over the place but for grass you can pile it all over the top of you so it just kind of depends on what materials you have and if it's raining currently if there are dry materials or are if there are none that's something as well it makes things a little bit more difficult if you pile a bunch of wet boughs on you that probably won't necessarily insulate you from the rest of the environment so the key is like with my other video where i made a natural shelter slept in it in the winter and tried to sleep in it with no sleeping bag there's too much air all around there's all these boughs that would have protected me from the environment but it couldn't hold the air in to warm up this is going to hold the air in to warm up the big thing and it's easy to skimp on is your bedding make sure you have enough bedding but guess what it's only 650 so it's really not that late it's not the time to be survival skimpy house <laughs> and get just a little bit of grass it's time to be survival schoolhouse fill up a big natural sleeping bag get inside it and keep surviving it's important to get in feet first head first you're gonna get in there and gonna not know what to do so an important part about a debris nest getting inside some type of insulation is to get that insulation close to you so it acts like a big giant blanket or sleeping bag now is it going to be uncomfortable getting grass everywhere inside your clothes no yes of course there's going to be a bunch of grass getting in all everywhere so it can be advantageous to put a hood on that can help you out zip up keep all that heat in and try and keep a lot of that grass out as much as possible now another interesting thing that you can do is you can take a bunch of grass and say you don't have enough to go around and make a big giant debris nest grab a bunch put a whole bunch inside all around everywhere put all this grass all in through your body zip it up and that's going to make you a nice natural puffy oh my feet are out at the bottom i need to put more insulation on the bottom time to get another giant load of grass a lot of the top compressed it was two feet high but it compressed down as it's been sitting there so you want to keep adding to it and then pull it in all around your head trying to prevent that air from escaping and then we'll see how the night goes it's gonna be good all right sweet dreams time to go to bed Just got in a shelter, clear out the spot. Whew. Let's pull this in, make some insulation. Oh, it's feeling good. It's feeling like a big, giant, heavy, straw-filled blanket. We'll see you when I wake up. We have about 50 degrees and spots in here, but there's some drafts. So it's 12.50. I need to add some more insulation over the top. Good morning, it's 5.22. Slept a little bit. Woke up two times in between that from two o'clock to 5.20. Slept that whole time. And I just woke up a couple times. But before that, it was a little cold. And there's still a draft. There's a couple drafts. So I got up and added more stuff to the shelter. Can I always add more? Oh, good experience though. It's windy, it's just starting to snow. We survived the night. Halfway through, put my rain jacket just over my legs. It's 
6.20 now, light enough to film. So I was up at 5.20, got up, went to the bathroom, went back in here. Now it's snowing pretty hard. All in all, an okay night. I survived. <laughs> I'm a little cold though. My feet were cold. I have no long johns on. I just had this thin puffy jacket. Inside the shelter is about 45, 50 degrees. There's still a little draft down towards my feet and right up towards the front. It's hard to pull in enough grass. So you want to improvise some type of door, a better door system, more stuff to pull in all around you. So last night I got inside the shelter about 1030. I laid there for a couple hours, got up right around 1230, one o'clock, spent about another 45 minutes to an hour getting more grass, putting it on top. The thing about these shelters is that all this grass, it starts to compress. Whatever debris that you have usually compresses a lot. And so that's what happened to me. There's some drafts in there. I could feel some drafts coming in. And there's this wind going on right now and it's just cutting through it. And so it wasn't bad. You could just feel like a slow, steady stream of air coming in. It's not like it was whipping in, but it was just in a couple spots. I tried to make that better, putting more stuff over the top of it. So then I fell asleep. I got back in, fell asleep about two o'clock. Woke up two times in between then and 5.20 when I woke up. And then at 5.20, it was just time to get up. Like I was a little bit cold. I needed to move around and get the blood flowing. So you look out here right now, all the snow coming down, all the grass that I was using is now starting to get wet. So I can still go collect grass and get more. I would just be able to grab it, try and shake the snow off and bring it over to the shelter. And that way I would, before it keeps snowing all day, I can improve upon this. But there's other considerations now. Now that it's snowing, maybe my priorities change as a survivor. Do I stay in this spot still? I probably need to start a fire, try and warm up, or just get back in the shelter. So everything is going to be situational dependent. If this is a long-term situation, it's not going to be fun getting in and out of this every time. I'd want to improve upon this. So all in all, it takes two, three hours to make something like this. So you want to make sure your resources are close by. So yeah, this tree was good. It's blocking a lot of the snow already that's happening. That's nice, but you want to be close to your resources. So depending on where you're at, this may or may not be the most practical shelter that you have. It kept me alive throughout the night. Even though it was a little cold, I had no sleeping bag, just clothes on my back. So I call that a success. We'll see on the next one. Keep surviving. So look at all the snow we got the other day. All this tree is protecting the shelter and just a little bit came inside here. And so you could use snow as an insulation if it's not freeze thawing every day and then soaking down into the shelter, creating a big ice box because snow is a good insulator if you put eight inches minimum over the top. But a downside to that with a debris nest and with this grass right here is that it could compress it a lot. You can see how much it already compressed just due to gravity. So I'd want to keep adding on this because if I was getting in here, we only have right around eight inches of grass right there. Again, we want a couple feet. Is this survival wimpy house? No, this is survival schoolhouse. Let's get in the debris nest. <laughs>